In this video, we will learn error handling in Go, focusing on panic and recover. In languages like Java and C Sharp, error handling is primarily managed through the try catch mechanism. When an error occurs within a try block, the catch block catches it, allowing the program to handle the error gracefully. This approach provides a clear structure for handling exceptions and ensures that your application can respond to errors without crashing. Go takes a different approach. Instead of exceptions, Go has panic and recover for handling runtime errors. A panic stops the normal execution of a function and starts panicking up the call stack. Let us first learn how to raise a panic. It can be simply done with the method panic like this. This method breaks the flow of the program. Now, if we want to recover from the panic, we can use recover method like this. If there is something to recover, we print the panic here. But there is an issue here. VS Code says this code is unreachable. The reason is there is no try block here that tells it is followed by the catch block. So we need to specify the recovery code before the panic happens. Let's move the recovery code to a function. We need to defer this code so that it can be executed at the end of the function. Now, Go knows how to recover before the panic happens. Let's run the program. Here it has recovered from the panic. What if the recover block is not there? The program exits with a non-zero exit code. This approach even works if one of the function calls panic. Let's move the panic call to a function. The code still recovers from the panic. Now let's explore another concept in Go's error handling, repanicking. Repanicking is when you catch a panic with recover, perform some operations and then decide to panic again. This can be useful for logging errors or cleaning up resources before letting the panic propagate up the call stack. Let us understand repanicking with this code. With this piece of code, we ask the user to enter a number. Then we read what the user enters on the command line into a variable input. Then this code calls the process input function. At the beginning of the main function, we have this recover code block. Let's see what's there in process input method. This method takes an argument input, which is a string. Here we use parseInt method to convert the string to the integer type. If this conversion fails, this means the wrong data was entered by the user, so we throw the error using panic. This recover block catches the panic and recovers. We print the error. Here, we do the cleanup. In the end, we propagate panic up the call stack to the main function. This propagated panic is now caught by this recover block. 
Let's run the program. Enter a number. Hmm. Let's enter a string. Here is the first recover. This print is from the recover block in the main function. Let's run it again. This time we enter a number. And everything went well. No panic. While Java's try-catch blocks manage exceptions explicitly, Go's panic and recover provide a more implicit way of handling errors. In Java, checked exceptions force error handling, promoting a proactive approach. In contrast, Go encourages handling errors only when necessary, focusing on simplicity and reducing boilerplate code. When using panic and recover in Go, remember these best practices. Use panic only for unrecoverable errors, situations where the application cannot continue. Recover is best used in top-level functions, such as those handling web requests or Go routines, to prevent the entire application from crashing. Always clean up resources. Use defer for cleaning up resources, whether a panic occurs or not. We hope this tutorial helps you navigate Go's error, handling with more confidence. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more programming tutorials. Happy coding!